Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone, it's Fahim, and you're listening to the Nisa Invest Tea Talk podcast. Hope everybody's feeling good, ready to start your Friday. Alhamdulillah, it's Juma today. And we're here to recreate in podcast form what happened last year at my local mosque, Sister Circle, where a few of us got together and I was able to run a session on all things halal personal finance. Whether it had to do with halal investing, pensions, budgeting, we covered all of it. And at the end of the session, I asked my sisters to leave me with what further questions they had so that I could cover it with you in podcast form. So thanks so much for joining me. And let's get started. So the question this week asks a step-by-step guide on how to invest on the actual websites. So that means a, a step-by-step guide on how to invest on an investment platform online. Now, uh, throughout this podcast so far, I've spoke about how it's great to get yourself to the point where you're investing for the long term. Uh, and I mentioned that a great way to do that is to make sure that you're doing it in a tax efficient way by having a stocks and shares ISA. And once you open that account, you want to build up your portfolio to include a halal index fund that you invest in regularly. So today I'm just going to go through step by step. How is it that you actually do that? Now, so without further ado, we can just get started on step number one. So step number one is to choose the investment platform we're going to use to open our account. So nowadays, there's like a lot of choice for consumers as to which investment platform to use. And over the years, I think I've opened four different stocks and shares ISAs with different uh, providers, uh, mainly to just test out how is it that they work, whether I like them or not. And really the main criteria for my decision, of course, is whether or not they will have the index funds that I'm looking for, meaning do they have a, a halal index fund there. So it won't come as a surprise that you probably want one that has like a lot of choice. And so the one that I use is with Hargreaves Lansdowne. So Hargreaves Lansdowne is one of the largest brokers in the UK. They're really quite easy to use and I use them on the website, but they have an app, but I just use the web platform um, to do that because I don't really feel the need to have to invest on the go. I just do it sat at my desk uh, once a month. And so I go on hl.co.uk, that stands for Hargreaves Lansdowne. They're saving us the trouble of having to spell it out. So that's uh, my first port of call. Now this brings us to step number two. So now you have to choose the type of account that you want. So once you find yourself on the website, you will, and I'm picturing the landing page right the second, you'll find somewhere on there that allows you to log in. Now you click through there, and it allows you to register. And you'll notice that what they're asking you is to register with one of their accounts. What does that mean? You'll notice that there are different types of investing accounts that you can open. Um, You can open a stocks and shares ISA. You can open a general investment account that is not an ISA. And you can open a pension too on Harvey's Lansdowne. Now, What we're after is to make sure that the account that you have allows you to make the most of tax advantages. So a great way to invest tax-free in the UK is by using a stocks and shares ISA. So what does that mean? A stocks and shares ISA allows you to grow your money and have the gains that you get from your account not be subject to tax. So uh, I... Very briefly, how is it that you make money in the stock market? You can do so in one of two ways. Uh, You can do so through capital gains by selling your investments at a higher price than you bought them. Or you can get dividends. uh, And dividends is like a profit sharing that happens between the company and the shareholders. So both of these forms of income are subject to tax generally. So 
in the UK, we have a certain allowance uh, for capital gains. And with dividend tax, everyone has an allowance of a thousand pounds. Anything above that, you start to get taxed. Now, if you're starting to invest today, you want to make sure that you take advantage of a stocks and shares ISA because it's what's called a tax wrapper. It means that your investments are and any growth that you get from it are not going to be subject to capital gains tax and they're not going to be subject to dividend income tax. So when they're asking you to choose one of our products, you want to choose the stocks and shares ISA because you're looking to open an account that allows your money to grow uh, tax-free. And they also mention that filling out uh, the form to open your stocks and shares ISA should just take 10 minutes. So there you go. So that's step number two. You've chosen um, to open a tax advantaged investment account uh, as your first starting point. So step number three is what comes next, which is to ask yourself a series of questions to make sure that you are at the point where you're ready to invest for the long term. So I call this step the disclaimers. So the series of questions are, are you comfortable choosing your own investments? The second is, are you confident about making long-term uh, investment decisions? That is code word for, are you comfortable putting that money into that account and having it sit there in the investment for at least five years? Why is because that is the way that you can get a commensurate return for the risk that you're taking. And historically, if you're invested in a broad-based market index, which is what we're looking to do in this episode, they've historically trended upwards. But of course, if you take your money in and out, even being out of the market for one or two days, that has an impact on whether uh, or not you're able to make the most of the compounding returns that come from putting the money in and not and leaving it there to do the work over a long period of time. So that's the question. Then a bit more of what we've talked about, which is, you know, the very best financial plans are the ones that allow you to cover your basic expenditures, but also uh, take care of emergencies. So that means you should have an emergency fund or cash available to use without needing to resort to taking money out from the stock market. You want it to do its work and be there for, you know, future you. Similar to that, you want to be free of debt. Why? Because it is effectively any return that you could get from the stock market would in any case be cancelled out by the interest that you pay on any debt that you have. That is why it's important to be free of debt before, especially high interest debt, before you start investing. Just because it's a stocks and shares ISA, it's only available for people who are over the age of 18 and tax residents in the UK. So you'll also see the disclaimer that says your capital is at risk. What does that mean? It means it's not a current account, it's an investing account, which means that your investments can go up as well as down. So... Uh, that is why you should be comfortable making your own investment decisions for the long term. Now, all of which that I'm saying, I, this is kind of my own disclaimer too, is for you know education purposes. It's not what's strictly called financial advice because financial advice by its very nature is personal. So it also on that same page will be encouraging you to seek out financial advice if you want that. There are two main platforms in the UK where you can look for financial advisors. One is called Unbiased uh, and the other one is called Vouched For. So you can search and find a financial advisor that you want to speak to. I'm also a qualified financial advisor and many financial advisors are very happy to have a conversation. So there you go. After you see all these disclaimers, then it tells you step number four. What is it that you need to have to hand to open up your account and start investing? So that's three things you need to have. Firstly, your national insurance number, and that's simply because of the fact that this is a tax advantaged account, so they need to be able to track you. And second, you need to have a debit card on you so that you can 
deposit money into the account and it tells you that to open the account you need to have a hundred pounds so you need a hundred pounds to open the account uh, any deposits that you make after that don't have to be a hundred pounds at a time they can be 25 pounds at a time so that's great we have the 100 pounds into the account and we know that that 100 pounds sticks sits within a stocks and shares isa so now we're at step number five which is to choose our investments if you're back on the home page at the very top uh, you can see a drop down that says investing now if you click on that drop down menu you'll see that there are different types of investments that you can do one says shares so that means investing in individual stocks so we're just going to skip right over that uh, and you'll see that there is also a line for funds and then another that says etfs etc now because we're looking to invest in a halal index fund that sits within funds when i was retracing my steps on the website i thought you know i think it's useful to take a moment to dis distinguish the difference between an index fund and an ETF, which stands for an exchange traded fund, because both of them are very similar in that they represent passive forms of investment. So what does that mean? That, that means that there isn't an individual that's using their brain and their thoughts and their analysis to make the investment decision. Instead, it is effectively a computer program that is simply replicating or um, tracking an index. So that's simply a way for individuals to get exposure to the market and the returns that they're expecting are the returns of the index that that fund is tracking. Now, the only difference between index funds and exchange-traded funds are how they're traded so how are they made available for you and i to buy so an exchange traded fund can be bought the same way you would buy a stock meaning that they're traded on the market itself whereas an index fund by definition it's not exchange traded instead fund managers and by fund managers i don't mean individuals i mean actual companies create these index funds and they sell them what are examples of fund managers fidelity is a famous one blackrock is another so these are actual fund managers and they have a set of index funds available for their clients to choose so what makes passive investment strategies attractive so firstly they're simply lower cost it costs less to just have it be a computer doing it rather than having to pay a fund manager a percentage of the fund performance every year and that's called an expense ratio and also they're diversified uh, by putting money into an index fund you're exposed to the entire market so we know that what we're after is an index fund so at this stage all you've got to do is click on funds so this brings me to step number six where you'll be presented simply by a search page now i don't want to sound too simplistic when i say this but given that you're after a halal index fund um you can go ahead and search the term islamic and the term index and see what comes up uh, because what we want to do is find uh, the fund that we want to invest in so here you'll realize that four very similar sounding options show up and they're all for the hsbc islamic global equity index so let's just break that down a tiny bit so the reason why it says that it's by hsbc is because hsbc is also an asset manager and they're the providers of this fund now the islamic global equity index what it's saying what makes it uh, a halal index fund is because the objective of it, and I'll just read it out, it says that it aims to track as closely as possible the returns of the Dow Jones Islamic market 
Titans 100. So it tells you what is the index that they're tracking in this fund, and that's the Dow Jones Islamic Market Titans 100. Now, I'll make a whole other video about halal index funds, how they're constructed, and what do they represent as an investment option. But effectively, what it's doing is that it's designed to measure the performance of the largest 100 stocks that are traded globally that pass the rules-based screens that they've put uh, to ensure that they are compliant. Now, what's good to note is that we found this index fund on the Hargreaves Lansdowne website. You could find the same index also if you used another investment platform uh, like AJ Bell, and I've done that in the past. I've invested in that same fund through AJ Bell too. So hopefully now you can understand the distinction between an investment platform, which is where you will open your stocks and shares ISA, and the actual funds that you pick. So HSBC, they make their Islamic Global Equity Index available not only to people to buy through Hargreaves Lansdowne, but other investment platforms as well. And so I think now we're getting closer, but the issue we're faced with is how do we pick between the four options that were presented, especially since they all go by the same name. So that brings me to number seven. And uh, step number seven is two additional uh, considerations. So to summarize uh, the distinctions that we've done so far, I spoke about the difference between an index and an ETF, and that's purely a technical distinction. They both represent passive ways to invest. So far, we've chosen a passive strategy by way of an index fund. The second distinction is about how is it that we wish to get any growth from our investment. So there are two ways of doing that. One way is through accumulation and the second way is through income. And so if you're still on that screen, I would recommend that you simply just filter for unit type. And there you'll see the distinction. It actually tells you what the difference is between an accumulation fund and an income fund. And that really just depends on what your objectives are as an investor. So if, for instance, you're someone who wants to use the cash that you make from the stock market regularly, that's when you would choose income. But because we are instead investing for capital growth and for the long term, any returns that we make, we would much rather that they remain reinvested in the stock market and as a result they are able to compound you'll find that if you click on accumulation it reduces the options uh, by two and you're left with a distinction between share classes now this might sound complicated but uh, you'll see that that's it, in the title of the two uh, funds that you have remaining you'll spot one's called bc so Beta Charlie and the other one's called AC, so Alpha Charlie. You can click on both uh, and you can try to spot the difference between the two. And the difference between the two is what currency they're denominated in. So, because we're investing in the UK, to make sure that we're not, you know, paying for our pounds to be converted into another currency to be invested in an index. What we want to do is make sure that the share classes that we're buying of this index are available in pounds. And so the one that is called BC is the one that has the share class denominated in Great British Pounds. And so that is the fund that we have our eye on. Now, so step number eight is just to, you know, review your investment. What does that mean? So once you click on that fund, it'll present you with a fact sheet, um, a page that you'll be able to see much of what we've spoken about. So what's going to be presented there? Firstly, you're going to see its past performance and it will tell you something like, remember that past performance is not the same as future performance, but that's useful knowledge to have. You'll also notice that it will say something about the charges so I spoke about the difference between active funds being more expensive than passive funds. 
and here you'll see two charges the charge that uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne has for you to use the account and then what's called the net ongoing charge for choosing that particular fund. What you want to do is make sure that your net ongoing charge is as low as possible. So by definition, the index funds are attractive because of the fact that they are low cost. And here you'll see that the net on ongoing charge should be less than a percent. Now, it might sound like, you know, if I choose to buy this at AJ Bell or I choose to buy this at Hargreaves Lansdowne, the page on the website might look a bit different and people are conscious of that. So instead, uh, fund managers, so HSBC itself, they are responsible for making a PDF available to all their investors. Uh, that's called a KIID form, so a KID form. And the KID stands for key investor information document so it has standardized disclosures much of what's already on the website itself but if you open that up it effectively summarizes what does it summarize so it it, it will summarize that you're tracking an index it will tell you that the share class is in great british pounds it will tell you that your income is going to be reinvested so that means it's an accumulation fund it will remind you should be invested for at least five years. It will also remind you of the ongoing charge of the fund. And then it will tell you what the past performance of the fund has been. So this step is important because now you also know, hopefully, what is it that you're looking out for in an investment. So at this point, what I do is I click invest now and it will tell me what do I want to do? And I go, I want to buy more. And I say, how much are you going to put in? And I put down exactly how much. It will tell you, please confirm. Uh, and, and there you go. So I wish, I wish there was a step number 10, but unfortunately, that's the end of the story. So I really wanted this to be a, a 10 step video. So I've made up step number 10. Step number 10 is effectively to just go and set it and forget it so effectively just um commit yourself to investing for the long term and why do i say this i say that you know the way i approach it is as part of a, a routine so every month i just would put money into the stock market now if you are someone who's moving from having saved a lot of money and you think you know there's a portion of that that is slightly above my emergency fund needs how is it that i go ahead and transfer it over into the stock market even then you don't have to go ahead and do it all in one go you can use a, a strategy that's called dollar cost averaging what you're saying is that you're committing to the strategy of putting money into the market in set increments over a particular period of time so what that would look like is if you had 1800 pounds over and above your emergency fund and you're like oh i should have been investing all this time you might say you know over the next six months i'm going to commit to putting 300 pounds every month and that is a great way to get yourself into the habit of investing but also it allows you to make the most of dollar cost averaging which is where you commit to investing a particular amount of money every month and that way uh, whether the price is high one day or low the other it doesn't matter to you because you're just investing through that and over the long run you know that's not going to have that much of an impact. I hope that the end of this video was appropriately underwhelming uh, and once you feel like you've understood and feel confident about making uh, the decision to invest in the stock market in the long run knowing that there are halal investment options available to you you can get on with the rest of your life knowing that your money is working for you uh, i have to say that you know it's not terribly exciting uh, but that's exactly how it should feel the stock market is not somewhere that you should go to to get some kind of thrill it's a place for really disciplined long-term investing because you appreciate that uh, if you're young you can withstand a certain amount of risk if you have the funds to cover for emergencies 
you can make sure that part of your income is going towards making more income so that future you is set up for success inshallah i hope that that helped answer the question of how to go about it step by step this is simply the method that i use this has been the nisa invest talk podcast i will see you next juma assalamualaikum bye for now